with Storm Search 7 Chief Meteorologist Steve Kirsch. A couple days ago, we had a day in which you looked outside, saw plenty of sunshine, thought, oh man, it's nice and warm. Then you walked outside and it wasn't. Today was kind of that in reverse because it looked cold outside. Then this after you walked outside and thought, well, I don't need this coat after all. So it's kind of strange how we've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other this week. Let's start by looking at our school net sites on the central and north side of the city of Amarillo. And the mercury isn't dropping as fast as it normally would. And the cloud cover overhead is the reason for that. And granted, it's starting to cool off a little bit. 56 degrees right now at Bushland High School, 63 at Horace Mann Middle School. On the south side of town and down in Canyon, it is 62 degrees at Amarillo College and 61 right now at Lake Tanglewood. Up toward the north and west, 57 degrees at Oklahoma Panhandle State University in Goodwill, Oklahoma. 53 right now at the high school in Boise City. Now across the north and east, it's 59 degrees in Higgins, 62 in Canadian. Our newest school net site, the Arrington Ranch, is at 59. In the southeastern Texas Panhandle, 66 at the high school in Memphis, 64 at Childress, 61 at the high school in Paducah. Their high today was 72. And across the west and southwest, it's 57 at Vega, 53 at Will Dorado, and 58 degrees at the Lamb County Co-op down in Littlefield. Let's go to our school net side, our newest one, the Arrington Ranch. This is 17 miles southwest of Canadian. Winds out of the south-southeast around 10 to 20 miles per hour, 59 degrees, but you probably noticed this, the air pretty dry. Humidity value right now of 27%. All right, start by looking at our regional satellite radar composite. Of course, we had the cloud cover this morning, and it did feel and look cold this morning, but there was just enough sunshine getting through the cloud deck this afternoon that we did warm up nicely. But you can see all the cloud cover going all the way back into Southern California and Arizona. So you get the idea it's definitely going to be a cloudy night tonight. And this will act as a thermal blanket to keep our temperatures warmer than it should be for this time of the year if the cloud cover wasn't there. And the computer model definitely picks up on this trend. This trough of low pressure off to our east in the morning will keep our winds out of the southwest and west at around 15 to 25 miles per hour. So despite the fact it's going to be 40 in the morning, which is warmer than it should be, you factor in those winds, there's still going to be a bite in the air. But look how fast it warms up. 69 degrees at lunchtime. Here's a problem. 25 to 35 mile per hour sustained winds out of the west and southwest, gusting at times to 45, maybe even 55 miles per hour. Humidity levels back below 15% tomorrow afternoon. The fire danger will be high. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any better on Sunday. Another windy day is expected. Cloud cover rolls back in here in the afternoon. A frontal system will approach us, but we're not going to see that roll through till Monday. 71 the high with those southwest winds, 25 to 35 sustained, again, gusting upwards of 45 to 55 miles per hour. For tonight, 43 for low tonight in Borgers, Danette, Fritch, and Sanford, 42 in Pampa, White Deer, and Panhandle. Canyons low, 41, 40 degrees in Amarillo tonight with those mostly cloudy skies. Mostly cloudy skies tomorrow as well, 77 in Canyon, 76 in Amarillo, but the problem will be the wind, and the fire danger will be high. Of course, it hasn't rained a whole lot, and with the dry conditions and those westerly winds, can get ready. Be very, very careful tomorrow afternoon. And over the next seven days, another windy day expected on Sunday. Then the front arrives on Monday, and the temperatures go back to where they should be. I mean, keep in mind, 63 degrees is the 30-year average high. We're not going to be that this weekend, but we definitely will for next week. And, you know, as far as rain goes, none to be had with this system. Mm -hmm. Just wind. Yeah, yeah, just wind. You're right, though. went out this morning with layers of clothes, and it was just too much. It was, it was a nice warm day, and it fooled me. Uh, you'll look one of those deceiving things like as far a as lot it of it. looks go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. How would you feel if you were the winner of a granite kitchen makeover? You can be one courtesy of Pro News 7 and Adobe Wall Stonework. We're giving away two this month worth a total of $7,000. Enter through the Plus Contest tab at ConnectAmarillo.com. We have picked six finalists so far. We'll draw three more each of the next two Wednesdays. And then from the 12, we'll draw two winners November 23rd. So enter ASAP. Coming up tonight, we will talk about a unique bingo contest. The rules are simple. Bet on a square. Hope the cow goes there. But we'll show you how and where the game ended in just a few minutes. Oh, boy. <laughs>
Welcome back. At least 500 people are living with AIDS in the Texas Panhandle. Thankfully, the Panhandle AIDS Support Organization, also known as PASO, is around to help. Its annual turnabout event is tomorrow, where it hopes to raise $40,000 for the cause. The event promises to be an evening full of entertainment and laughter. Uh, it's our major fundraiser that we hold every year. It's uh, an incredibly fun event. Uh, people really don't know what to expect if they've never been before, but most of those folks that come one time are definitely back the next year. General admission tickets are still available. Just head to the Sunset Center off Plains and Western around 6.30 tomorrow night. ConnectAmarillo.com has more information. Many of us are making plans already to be on the Texas highways over the holidays, and from sheer volume alone, the road and other drivers will present dangers. Some of the safety and legal tips you need to follow are wearing your seatbelts, obeying the speed limits, driving sober, and keeping your hands on the wheel and off the cell phone. Some newer vehicles are making life on the road much easier and safer for us because of their upgraded safety features. A lot of safety features, which include the Bluetooth uh, that you can connect your mobile phones to. You can text by, by voice if your phone's equipped with it. Also, you have operator assistance with the sync system. So if you have any issues, you just call in and the operator will give you directions. It's equipped with 911 assist. If uh, anything happens, uh, airbags are deployed, it automatically calls 911 through your phone for you. More safety tips, of course, at ConnectAmarillo.com. Amarillo's SPCA is $1,000 richer. After this happened today, it took somewhere in the neighborhood of five months. But today, Pro News 7's Facebook page chalked up its 11,000th like. It happened at 2.22 p.m. this 11-11-11. Thanks to all you likers. We'll present the check Wednesday on Pro News 7's Daybreak. You'll like this time of the year if you love high school sports. More high school playoff football action tonight. One game is already going. And there's playoff volleyball to talk about, too. Lee Baker's next with sports. So fun. Update scores, please. Check mic, mic check. I got scores in. Check mic, mic check. Check mic, mic check. Check mic, mic check. Check mic, mic check. Now, sports coverage in the Panhandle Spirit with Lee Baker. 
Kelly, everyone, a full Friday of high school playoff football underway right now down in Midland. Not good. Tascosa trailing El Paso Montwood 33 14. They're in the third quarter. Coming up, Emerald High battles El Paso Americas. The Sandys are riding a winning streak right now. I do think we've, we've been on a semi row. You know, we, of course, uh, back in early October, fell a little short to win Central. And, uh, but I felt like our kids have really bounced back and had really good resolve and focus in preparing for the last three district ball games. I do feel like we've got some momentum, you know, going into the week 11, we're about as healthy as we could hope to be. Uh, and, you know, looking forward to the challenge that lies ahead. That game will start at 8 o'clock. And again, right now, Tascosa is in trouble in the third quarter against Montwood. In the 4A ranks, Randall and Caprock are set for action. Now, the Rock will meet second ranked Denton Ryan. Uh, this group of Longhorns has earned back to back playoff appearances and won 16 games over two seasons, both first in school history. Started out when we first started, I think they were in the eighth grade. And uh, what we told the parents is that we were going to do everything we could to, uh, to uh, provide them a winning program, but they had to put out the effort and, uh, and make it themselves. And it took a team effort between parents, coaches, administration, and kids. And uh, what uh, they said they were wanting a program like that at Cap Rock, and they, uh, the kids were willing to do it. And, uh, By the way, both games kick off 7 o'clock out of town. If you want to see a game locally, there's action out at Dick Bivens and Kimbrough Memorial Stadium. Those are 7.30 starts. Join me around 10.15 for the Blitz. We'll have lots of highlights and scores. The Amarillo Bulls starting life on the road for a long spell. Six straight games away from the Civic Center starting tonight in Topeka. The Roadrunners are tied for second in the division, four points back of the Bulls. Last time we played them was a 7-1 win here, and, and I, I, I know it's not going to be like that. More of our games are 4-2 or 3-2 with, with an empty netter, so I expect some hard-fought games there. They're a very good hockey team, and, and if, if we think we're going to go out and meet them 7-1 each game, we're going to have something new coming for us. So we got to get right back down to focus, chipping pucks, playing uh, a disciplined style game, make sure we're moving our feet, and, and, you know, and our special teams has to come through this weekend. All right, some final notes at the regional volleyball tournaments. Randall and Dumas won. They'll meet for the regional title on a trip to the state tournament. Bushland has advanced in the 2A regional. LSE volleyball tournament semifinals are underway at WT. A reminder, the volley buffs play 730. Rangers outfitter Josh Hamilton has undergone successful surgery to repair a sports hernia. He's expected to be fully recovered by spring training. Oklahoma men's basketball team has been placed on three years probation. $15,000 fine, plus the NCAA is vacating 13 wins from a 2009-10 season, taking away a scholarship. They have their issues at Oklahoma every once in a while they with do. breaking rules, but got a new coach, see what happens. Got to get Josh back, too, before we make another run for fun, right? Just think, spring training starts in February. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. not that many days. Got to love it. <laughs> but you know, you can make a game out of just about anything. Up in Canada, they drew a bingo grid on the ground as a fundraiser, but the game bogged down after that. Uh-huh. You'll see why exactly after this. <laughs>
we think you get the idea. The winner is the person who has the square in which the first patty falls. Uh, <laughs> Only there was a unique problem there. Must have been one bound up bovine. <laughs> <laughs> Even the farmer who brought her couldn't understand why nothing happened. Yep, it was a first for United Way and a first for this game itself. At least the cleanup was a breeze. <laughs> Bound up bovine is what nothing I just said. Happened. Yeah, that's yeah. nothing. It's like the days yeah, you hate when no weather is happening. And, and yeah. how do you how do you sit on the sidelines and cheer for? <laughs> it's cold, and there the bleachers were full of people up there yeah. hoping that something happened. We well, had a shoe drop. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, forecast for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I like that bound up bovine. Yeah. yeah. Good segue. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 56 <laughs> degrees at 9 o'clock. Those southwest winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. They'll increase at midnight tonight. The combination of the winds and the clouds are going to keep our overnight low temperatures up quite a bit. Only 40 degrees. It should be around 33 degrees. So this is definitely warmer than it should be. Now, the same thing applies to the high tomorrow. Definitely warmer than it should be. 63 is the average high. will be 76 tomorrow. Unfortunately, combination of the warm conditions, very dry west wind, uh, all the dry grass we have. Fire danger will be high tomorrow and Sunday. We do cool down on Monday. We'll have a lot more on our weather come up on the Blitz edition at 10. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Thank you for watching tonight. We'll see you at 10. ABC has a special Veterans Day Extreme makeover tonight. We'll see you mm -hmm. after that. Some of our local observances of Veterans Day tonight. A unique but very loud Veterans Day tradition tonight at 10. Local Veterans Day events, a unique veteran tradition downstate, and the last blitz of the season, all coming up at 10. Steve? Yeah, our weather was, sure was nice for Veterans Day, but over the weekend, get ready for windy and seasonably warm conditions. Find out more tonight at 10. It's a combination we've seen a lot of so far this year. Warmer than normal conditions, drier than normal conditions, both in the air and also in the ground. It's going to make for a fire danger threat both tomorrow and also on Sunday. Plus, there is a cold front heading this way on Monday, but uh, just how cold is it going to be next week? Find out more tonight on Crow News 7 at 10.